Hello, this is a tutorial for the VTube Studio plugin VTS Desktop Audio, which is a plugin that I developed. Um, it's a pretty simple plugin. Basically, it is for anyone who wants the audio coming out of their computer to affect their model in some way. And so this is a tutorial that's gonna show you how to actually uh, use it. So first things first, when you download it from itch.io, uh, it's gonna be a zip. So you just uh, extract it. I'm gonna say extract here using my local zip program. Um, and it's gonna create a folder, VTS Audi desktop audio plugin with the version number. Before you even start using the program, you wanna open up VTube Studio, um, click the cog wheel, and then click the cog wheel in the top left, and scroll down until you see this VTube Studio plugin section here. Toggle it so that start e API is on and take note of this port number because we're going to be using this in a second. You open that up. VTS desktop audio.exe is what you're going to open up. Now when you open up VTS desktop audio, uh, you'll see this connect to v VTS button up here and it will tell you if it's disconnected or connected. It says it's disconnected right now, it's hard to see, but uh, if you just click this, you'll see that it asks you in VTube Studio if you want to connect. If you're not getting that, check this port number and make sure it's the same port number that we had here in your start API. Is it the same? I'll click connect VTS. And then in VTube Studio, it's going to ask me if I want to allow. I'm going to click allow. And that means that now we can start using pl uh, plugin. And it's very, very simple. Um, basically, what this plugin does is it takes certain uh, values of your desktop audio and sends them to VTube Studio as an input parameter. Now, what is an input parameter you might be asking? An input parameter is basically uh, the tracking input uh, for your model. So this is a very, very simple model I made. Uh, it's just a heart. Um, I'm going to create this new parameter here, or maybe I would want to uh, edit an existing one. But for this heart, I'm going to be creating a new one. And I'm going to call this heartbeat. And then I'm going to click input and I'm going to type in desktop into this bottom thing. And this is going to show me all of the parameters that's available from the VTS desktop audio plugin. Um, here I'm going to use volume. So this is the total volume that's coming out of my desktop. And the output, I'm going to choose size. Okay, now everything's done. All you need to do is just play audio. Okay, I'm playing audio here. And you'll see that I'm getting a bunch of output in the actual VTS desktop uh, plugin. And that's all these bars here. If you're not getting any bars from your output, uh, first of all, make sure that you're playing sound on your default output on your Windows desktop. So for instance, mine is set to my system audio. Uh, because this this plugin will only grab the audio from your default output. If you've checked that and it's, it's still not working, um, please look into uh, WASPI. Um, I'll, I'll be linked in the description of this video. Um, troubleshooting, because I don't really know how to fix it for you. Every computer is different and uh, I don't really know. So basically, um, this right now is just taking the total volume of this and outputting it to VTube Studio as a uh, as a parameter. So basically, it takes this as input, it takes the volume as input, and then it changes it to into the actual parameter here, which this parameter actually just changes the size of the heart. So let's say that I'm like, ooh, this audio is too low, this whole song is very quiet, so I want to turn it up a little bit. This changes the intensity, okay? Um, you might want not want to do this for songs that change in volume or intensity a lot. Um, but this is just good if your whole sound is quiet or too loud. This can also go quieter, louder, and quieter. And this just, this doesn't actually change the volume of your desktop. This just changes the, uh, basically the intensity of the output. And let's say that, um... I, uh, this is not really reacting how I want it to be. I want it to be more sensitive. Then we want to make this input one zero sm uh, smaller in distance. So let's say that um, it's never really going below point one, but we do want it to have that really big spike and it's never really going above point three. So there we go. Now it's gonna change a lot in size because the distance between point one and point three is a lot smaller than the distance between zero and one. 
So that's how we use the input parameters for this. Um, if you want to be an advanced user, there's more options, and that's what we're gonna go into now. But if you're a simple user, if you just want the basic stuff, uh, that's all you really need to do. You can play around with the different parameters that are available here. Desktop. So you can play with the base or the mid frequencies or the high frequencies. So if you're an advanced user, this section is for you. Um, basically, you can write different profiles, maybe for different songs or for different use cases. Um, so for instance, let's say I have a song that has uh, a much more wide bass range. So I want to increase the number of frequencies that I'm tracking for the bass. And then I want to move the mid, maybe I want to move to here, maybe I want to use, move the high range over there, whatever I want to do. And then I can add a new profile and I want to call this um, big bass and click save new. So now you can see I'm on this new big bass profile. I can also always go back to my default profile whenever I want. I can also update the big bass profile by clicking overwrite. It will tell me, it will make sure I want to overwrite it and I click okay. And so now I'm back to that profile. I can also delete the big brace profile if I don't need it anymore. I can click delete. I also have the option to change how the parameters are being uh, calculated. This is specifically for the base, mid, and high parameters. Basically, it takes all of the values in these frequency ranges that are with within the range you've selected and changes how it calculates it. So relative max takes the average value of all of the frequencies in the range and subtracts it from the maximum uh, frequency value in the range. So maximum just takes the maximum value in the range. For instance, that would be this one here. It would just be one basically almost all the time here for the base here. Average just averages all of the values in the range. And change in max uh, detects how much change is happening with just the max value, basically uh, the acceleration or the derivative, that might be too complicated. <laughs> but yeah, I don't I don't know how well this this calculation works. Uh, usually, relative max is good for most cases, um, and that's pretty much it. So uh, if you're an advanced user, you have access to these profiles that you can set um, for different songs. Uh, that will also save the intensity, uh, this intensity value here. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, please comment on this video. I'll help you out if you have any, or on the itch.io page. I'll see those too. And thank you guys so much for checking out this plugin. See ya.